Okay, today what we're going to do is pay attention to the way in which subsistence and art are integrated. That means if we know how a culture gets its food, we can predict what its artistic patterns are going to look like. And conversely, if all we know about a culture is some piece of art, if all we have is the art and we know nothing else about them, what we can do is look at the art and by paying attention to some of the design elements, we can tell how they do food. So we'll look at right now, we're going to compare the art of hunter-gatherer cultures to the art of agricultural cultures. This is an example of hunter-gatherer art. And we'll look at a number of, of images here, but we're going to be paying attention to four lines of inquiry. The first thing we pay attention to is how simple is your design? Hunter-gatherer art tends to feature very simple design elements. There's not a lot of moving parts in here. There's some type of battle. There's not a lot of color. There's not a lot of range, maybe. Perhaps this is due to the fact that hunter-gatherers live in largely undifferentiated patterns. They don't do a whole lot of different things. They hunt, they gather, and they have community. In contrast, when we look at the art of agriculturalists, there's tons of stuff going on. We live in a highly complex world. Not all of us farm. Some of us do different things. Some of us are tax attorneys. We don't know what's going on, so we have a lot of elements depicted in our art. The second line of evidence we pay attention to is symmetry. Hunter-gatherers produce highly symmetrical art. Now, there's not a mirror image here, but you get a sense that what's going on here is kind of what's going on over here. Again, maybe because there's not a lot of division of labor in hunter-gatherer cultures. They get up in the morning, they hunt, and they gather. They work it out, but everything's more the same. There's no rich people, there's no poor people, there's no more important people. That's what's going on here. Third point, we'll look at some slides here. A lot of open space. There's a lot of open space here. Well, hunter-gatherers live in small groups, maybe a hundred people, and they have to have a lot of space around because there's only so many people you can have packed tightly together if you're going to live off nature's boundary. The fourth point, hunter-gatherer art is unbounded. There's no frame. There's no edge to it. When we look at our art, it's framed. There's a boundary. There's an edge, a wooden frame, and it's almost always a square or a rectangle. We're claiming space. We're farmers, we have square fields, rectangular fields. That's our land versus not our land, and we do the same thing with our art. Let's look at a couple of other examples. Another piece of hunter-gatherer art. Simple design, highly symmetrical, lots of open space, and unbounded. Let's look at some other art. This Renoir here is very different. No hunter-gatherer paints like this. It's highly complex, right? It's, it's highly complex. There's so much stuff going on. You can pay attention to the lights themselves for half an hour. It's not symmetrical. It's not symmetrical at all. I mean, look, this is a professional painter, and he's paying attention to this. The people in the back don't even have faces. They don't even have faces. You know why? They're not important. Once we get to agriculture, we don't have an egalitarian world anymore. Some people are more important than others. She's important. Open space. Not one dot, he didn't leave one dot of open space. He claimed this entire space as his own. And then, whoop, and then it is unbounded, right? It is highly bounded. There's a boundary about this. There's a square. You know this is in a frame. He plotted out his space against someone else's space. This is Joe Bear's cleverly titled Untitled. And I like this piece because it is completely within my skill sets to make. I think a hunter-gatherer made things? I don't think a hunter-gatherer made it either. Well, is it simple or complex? Are there simple design elements? Well, I'd argue there's no design elements. Is it symmetrical? Well, it kind of is. There's nothing there. Is there open space? Well, maybe you filled it up with blank. Is it bounded? Yes. And then if we look at this, you know Andy Warhol. You think a hunter-gatherer paints like this? Not at all. There's some highly, even though it's just a can of soup, there's some highly complex design elements. It's not really symmetrical here. There's not a lot of open space, and of course it's bounded. So what we're getting at here is if we can know a little bit about how you paint, how you do images, how you draw, just by paying attention to these four variables, we can get a sense of how you do things.